Hello, I'm KRS. I am the best when it comes to talking to the rest. Well, last month we covered Smurfs 1, so I figured, why not follow up this month with Smurfs 2? Honestly, I feel like that'd be a good choice. Oh, this, this poured out really fast. Oh well. Um, Smurfs 2. If I remember correctly, it was back in 2012 when Katy Perry won the Kids' Choice Award for Favorite Voice in an Animated Feature. During her acceptance speech, she announced that Smurfs 2 was coming next year. Yes, before cartoon news pages were a thing, you had to watch the television to learn news about the entertainment industry. Or go to the movies. And both of them are very expensive. And sure enough, Smurfs 2 did come out on July 31st, 2013. Last month, I thought the Smurfs movie was underrated in a sense of terms. It's not as bad as people were making it out to be. It had filler problems, sure, but it wasn't unbearable to watch. What do I think of this movie? Well, let's take a look. This is Smurfs 2. The movie starts off with a retelling of Smurfette's origin story and how she was a creation of Gargamel that was sent to destroy the Smurfs. She was ultimately turned into a Smurf by Papa after he saw the good in her. In fact, why wasn't the story adapted into a movie? I feel like it would actually be a good origin story for the Smurfs, as well as explain how Smurfette came to be. I mean, perfect potential for a good plot in a good movie. We then see Smurfette refer back into her old evil ways and even has a dragon wand. <gasps> Smurfette, are you okay? I dreamed I was in a bad 2009 YouTube AMV. Meanwhile, in the real world, we see Gargamel now performing a magic show with the... Wait, wait, wait a minute, wait a minute. How does he have the dragon wand? Because in the first movie, at the end, of the wand was broken after the Smurfs won the battle against Gargamel. Now he has a new one? I don't understand if he got a new one during the show that looks like the old one, but no, the film never explains that at all! How dare this kid's movie meant for kids have no logic whatsoever! Gargamania, the magical sensation that has captivated the nation from New York to Las Vegas. Honestly, not the weirdest mania I've seen this year. So Gargamel is now a celebrity in Paris through his magic, and he also made two naughties named Haggis and Vexy. And they're literally just Smurf Sonos from DeviantArt. I think the problem I have with these two characters is that there's nothing that makes them interesting. Like in Toy Story 2, the new characters have something interesting about them, whether it be Jesse's backstory or Yodel, or the fact that Bullseye was almost played by Martin Lawrence. But what really makes a character is their personality. And what was the personalities I got for Vexy and Haggis? Dumb and girl, that's it. Back in Smurf's Village, everyone is getting ready for Smurfette's birthday via a surprise party. Occasionally, it's good to have a little <clears throat> alone time. Yeah, so take a hike. Yeah, we don't need you here, we're good. <sighs> Bye. Wow, nothing says happy birthday like being told to scram, especially for someone with identity issues. Meanwhile, back in New York, Patrick and Grace, now being parents to a boy whose name is Blue, for some weird reason, is celebrating his fourth birthday when Patrick's stepdad, Victor, played by Brendan Gleeson, drops by for the occasion. So let's go. Arms in the air. You're all getting hugs. Hey! Hello. Okay, I th thought you said your father left you. He did. This is my stepfather. No. You'll want him to leave, just wait. Oh, oh, I see what we're going for here. We're going for the father figure that was never in the son's life, thus making him a bad father figure who is now trying to re-enter his son life and apologize for all his wrongdoings. There's only one problem with that. There's nothing wrong with Victor. He's actually pretty likable. I mean, this guy seems very chill. I don't, Why do we hate him? Okay, now we have a reason to hate him. He accidentally poisons a kid with a peanut allergy. That is definitely a value reason as to why you should hate someone. Speaking of hatred, Gargamel's new plan is to kidnap Smurfette, figure out the formula to make blue Smurfs, that way he can create his own Smurfs and drain their essence. That's a good evil plan for him. Seriously, that's a better evil plan than what he was cooking up in the first movie. This film might actually be good. Nothing can stop me now! Ow! 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 
And there goes our villain, getting killed by Tom and Jerry shenanigans. And yeah, I know there was slapstick in the first movie, but that movie knew how to balance him as a bumbling villain and a legit threat. This movie just makes him a bumbling villain because apparently being stupid sells more than being scary. Anyway, Gargamel opens a portal to Smurf Village. If I said the words why and how, we would be here till November. However, it's too small for him to enter through, so he sends Vexy to grab Smurfette. Okay, how was she able to open the portal? She doesn't have a wand. Unless the portal remained open as Vexy entered through the small water pool, why not just keep the portal open and have Vexy pull Smurfette through it? You know, make her actually evil? Now, I would give the writers the benefit of the doubt if these were new writers, but here's the thing. These are the exact same writers that wrote for the first movie. So... I'm going to be a little more hard on them because I would assume they would know what they were doing when writing this movie. That night, Papa Smurf is devising a plan to travel back to the human world and find the Winslows to see if they can help find Smurfette. Hi Smurfs, listen up. I saved enough god of water from the last blue moon for just such an occasion. I was able to smurf it into a smurfortation crystal. Ah, so you don't need a portal. Very clever, Papa. Smurf, exactly. Say what you want, but at least they explained why the Smurfs could travel back to the real world without the blue moon. Instead of just making up some random excuse. However clumsy, well, being clumsy, accidentally goofs and causes him, Grouchy, and Vanity to go to the human world with Papa Smurf. Clearly one of them sticks out like a sore thumb. Back in New York, Patrick is low than his father as he puts a paper hat on his son's head. Also, we learn the reason he hates Vector was because of him giving away a pet pair that his original father left for him. That bastard! Not Victor, Patrick. So after whatever this is... The Smurfs reunite with the Winslows and meet Blue and Vector. They inform them of Smurfette being kidnapped, and off to Paris we go. Give him the formula. You want to give it to him. You'll feel better about yourself if you stop being such an annoying little brat and give him the formula. Well, at least she's not getting the same fate as Cookie Monster. Meanwhile, Patrick goes with the Smurfs to investigate Gargamel's magic show at the Palais Garnier. All the while, Grace investigates Gargamel's hotel. And what was Vector doing? Watching Blue, obviously. Blue, yeah, 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 just listen. Blue and I decided we can't let you run solo on this. We can do this together. Oh, I figured it out. I know why we hate him. Because he plays by his own rules. Victor is the coolest character ever in cinematic history. After Victor confronts Gargamel, he turns him into a duck. Now, if only Patrick was turned into an alligator, we'd have a good cartoon show. Get out, yes. But why does he Okay, this is boring. Let's see what the Smurfs are doing. Smurfette actually does manage to get away, and Vexy and Haggis go after her. Literally two seconds after this, Papa Smurf and the others arrive and discover why Gargamel kidnapped Smurfette. Uh, guys? Total Smurf again. <gasps> oh, dear. Oh my god. How the hell did that tablet not crack after falling down those stairs? So Patrick and Victor get away with Blue, and Patrick blames Vector for him fumbling the plan. You know, I don't get why having the character build in moments between the estranged father and the son when the father is a duck. I cannot take this seriously because he's a duck. This movie has the opposite of the filler problem. Like, the film does know what's important to focus on, whether it be relationships of the characters or the story progression. 
But this movie is literally the equivalent of flipping a light switch. It has its good moments when the light switch is flipped up. Then it has its bad moments that make zero sense when the light switch is flipped down. Or sometimes it just does this. Annoying, huh? Luckily, it's not permanent, just for a couple of scenes, as the group now plans to investigate Gargamel's hotel to see if Smurfette is there, who meanwhile is enjoying the company of her kidnappers. Oh no, they brainwashed her! So Vector thinks Patrick left the key card to Gargamel's hotel back at their hotel, so he decides to follow him to Gargamel's hotel. What? It's the security card for the elevator. I have the security card. What is this? This is our room key. Oh. How dare that good father be there for his son even though he wasn't needed. So the plan starts to fall apart as the Smurfs and Patrick are split up. The Smurfs luckily do make it to Gargamel's hotel room, but it does seem that they are too late. Why is she being? Nice to them. She's just identifying with their captors. It's classic Smurf home syndrome. No, she thinks we don't care anymore. I mean, we should have said happy birthday for her when she was going through her identity crisis. I forgot to mention, during the progress of the film, Smurfette has been manipulated by Gargamel into feeling safe. So much so, he got her a toy dragon wand for her to practice magic on. Like giving the squirrel a gun. So the Smurfs think they're too late and are launched off the balcony, all while Patrick frees his dad. Take to the skies, lads! Free at last! Free at last! What are you, Martin Luther Wing? That was an obscure Martin Luther King reference. But luckily, Vector catches the Smurfs and he turns back to normal. That is a lot of white meat! Ah! Now panic! Me no like it! <laughs> that was rendered. I will say we do get a good scene between Vector and Patrick where he learns that he was allergic to birds which led to Vector taking the blame for getting rid of the bird. And the only reason why this happened was because Patrick thought he was the reason his father left and Vector didn't want Patrick to feel more upset about him not being able to keep the bird because he was allergic to it. Thus why he took the blame for it. And that, ladies and gentlemen, makes Victor Father of the Year. He plays by his own rules. He has a body count. He was a duck for a short period of the time. But he is still a better father than most of you. Let's give it up for him. All right. We had a good scene. Time for filler. Yeah, we'll do 3005 by Childish Gambino. I'm sure no one will notice. We of course get another scene of Papa Smurf and Patrick lamenting fathers being there for their kids. However, this one didn't really hit as hard as the first movie did. I don't know if it's because of the moral lesson being about responsibility or the fact that I don't have a kid yet so I can't understand what it means to be a father. I just like the first movie scene better than this one. Moral of the story, fathers be there for your kids, kids be there for your fathers. Simple as that. So Papa Smurf and the Smurf decide to go bring Smurfette back home. Meanwhile, Gargamel is finally frustrated with Smurfette and is willing to let Haggis and Vexy die if she doesn't give him the formula. Honestly, they did kidnap her, so I don't think that would matter. Oh wait, she's brainwashed, so she does care for them. She gives Gargamel the formula and Vexy and Haggis turn blue. However, Gargamel now having the formula can make as many Smurfs as he wants and begins to drain Vexy, Haggis, and Smurfette. I wonder who did that. <laughs> I'll teach him. <laughs> After the power goes out, Gargamel looks to fix it. Meanwhile, the Smurfs reunite with Smurfette, Vexy, and Haggis. I gave Gargamel the formula. But she saved our lives. Yeah, but she brainwashed slash kidnapped her. That's still bad, even though she sort of cares for you now. Gargamel has the power back on and begins taking all of their essence and wants to use them for his big dragon wand. 
which sounds very wrong when reading it out loud. But luckily, Patrick and his father, who both patched their differences earlier, are now working together and destroy the machine with the essence, causing a cool effect to appear. Wow, Paris is beautiful. <laughs> Everyone reunites and Smurfette uses her wand that she still has and gives Gargamel a Team Rocket style defeat. The Smurfs thank the Winslows for their help before using the second bundle of crystals to get home. They make it back to Smurf Village and the movie ends with a birthday party for Smurfette who finally sees herself as a true Smurf with Vexy and Haggis. That was Smurfs too, and it was okay. Although not as good as the first movie, I did enjoy some bits and pieces of this movie. The logic didn't really make sense, and there were some plot points that definitely needed reworked. It still wasn't unbearable or bad to watch. This movie is as underrated as the first one was, but I can definitely understand why people wouldn't like this movie. The jokes weren't as funny as the first one, the characters don't really do much, and the plot, it was alright. Which honestly sums up this movie in general. It wasn't bad or good, it was alright. Which is why on a scale of 0 to 10, 0 being bad and 10 being glad, I give Smurfs 2 a 4 out of 10. I'm KRS, and next month is the final month of summer, which means we are in the end game. Things are gonna get ugly. Next week, we're reviewing Smurfs the Lost Village and Shrek the Third. I, I, I didn't want to like build up the hype, then you guys get disappointed, so um, I just figured I'd tell you now. See you Friday. We're gonna skate to one song, one song only. A1 Power. It's Smurfs I hate, and I'm a genius, it's truly great, I say Azrael, it's time to win, bring me a Smurf, and it will all begin, you can bid farewell to the Smurf cartel, and remember